The Columbus Blue Jackets had a very busy offseason and they made quite a splash. Jay Foster of Locked On Blue Jackets joins us to talk about that and Columbus's prospects for the upcoming NHL season. All that and more on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin with you here. So glad you could join us today. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the host of Locked On Blue Jackets, Jay Foster. And Jay, quite an eventful offseason in Columbus. The big, big story, obviously, Patrick Lane. Talk to me a little bit about the off season for the for the Blue Jackets. Oh man, I think and here's the thing is that Patrick Line resigning in any other year would have been like this huge thing. Right. But he signed like a week after Johnny Gaudreau came to town. Yes. So it's you know, we're already riding on this high of Johnny Gaudreau being here for the next seven years. We've got Patrick Line locked up for the next four years. Uh Warenski's good for I think the next seven years. Like it's it's a, it's an exciting it's an exciting season. Um, I'm super super excited. All these new names coming in, all these old names that are really still kind of like I don't even think guys like Wierenski and Line are at their peak yet. I right. think they've still got more to give us. And then you add in the youth of the team. You know, you look at Cole Sillinger, who had 16 goals and 31 points as an 18 year old in this league. You know, so looking at everything that happened, kind of the last season, this off season, it all kind of I'm expecting big things from the team this this coming this coming season. What does Johnny Goudreau's addition mean to this team, not just on the ice, but for the reputation of this team off the ice? Well, that's that's the thing, isn't it? So the the Johnny Goudreau does immediate immediately, in my opinion, makes this a playoff team. I don't know that they're quite a contender for the cup. You know, I'm not expecting the Blue Jackets to turn into the Tampa Bay Lightning overnight with the addition of Johnny Gaudreau. I don't think, you know, I think watching uh, Tampa Bay and Colorado in the Stanley Cup final, a lot of teams were like, oh, we're not just one or two guys away. You know, and I don't think Columbus is a Johnny Gaudreau away from being the Colorado Avalanche or the Tampa Bay Lightning or whoever. But he makes this team into a playoff team immediately. But more than that, and this is something that I have kind of always, uh, this is something that I've said a lot kind of when people are like, oh, what does Johnny Gaudreau mean to this team? The fact that Johnny Gaudreau chose Columbus is important. He's the first big free agent to to choose to sign here. You know, they've had some good players. They've had really good players, you know. Uh, but a lot of those players either were traded there or were drafted there. You know, like you look at Rick Nash. You look at Artemi Panarin, who was here for a couple of years. Uh, you know, Sergei Bobrovsky, who was maybe one of the best goalies in the league for a period of time before he went to Florida. Um Patrick Lyonet, amazing, phenomenal player, didn't choose to come here. Johnny Gaudreau came, chose to come to Columbus, and I think that has changed the way the entire league looks at this team. And I think, I don't think this is going to be the last time that a big free agent is like, hey, you know what? Columbus seems like a pretty good place. Columbus seems like a pretty cool place. You know, it only takes it only takes one guy to be like, hey, Columbus is cool, and for everyone else to be like, oh, actually, you know, you're not wrong. So I I think this is I don't know that if it's a like next off season the off season after but I think Columbus is slowly turning into the kind of place that guys are like hey I don't want the the glitz and glamour of the media in Toronto or the history of Chicago or you know I don't want to go to Tampa where there's no income tax Columbus has a really great city from the th- from by all accounts, they've got a fantastic locker room at the minute, and the team's shaping up to be pretty good. So I think that could be a really sneaky kind of low key def- um, destination for a lot of upcoming free agents that are maybe looking for somewhere new. Yeah, definitely a game changer in that respect. Now on the ice, where do you who do you see as Goudreau's most likely line mates? I mean, if if I'm coaching that team, I'm stapling him and Patrick Line together for the entire season 
I think Johnny Gaudreau is a phenomenal playmaker. Patrick Laine, for my money, I think has arguably a top five shot in the NHL. Definitely a top 10 shot in the NHL, in my opinion. Um, so you'd be stupid not to put those two guys together. And then obviously the question of who plays in between those guys. But honestly, like if you just find a guy that can win faceoffs, like I don't think you need anything special in between those guys. And I know a lot of teams, so many teams, so many fans, so much media is like, well, you need a number one center. You can't get anywhere in this league without a number one center. But for my money, if you have two wingers that are as good as Goudreau and Line are, like you could probably put me on that in that top line center position, and I would, you know, as long as I could win a face off, I would do okay. So I'm not, I'm not super worried about who's going to be centering those two players because I think they're good enough to carry the line by themselves. Put Jay Foster down for 45 points just for winning some face off this year. <laughs> the Blue Jackets were involved in a uh, prospects or rookie tournament this past weekend. Uh, who stood out so far in your mind? Oh, man. This, the problem is that the, the Columbus has kind of, again, very quietly put together a really good prospect pool. You know, like we've, we talked about Cole Sillinger briefly. He's not even considered a prospect anymore, I don't think. Um, but then you've got, you know, you've got Kent Johnson, drafted fifth overall last year. You've got David Juracek, drafted sixth overall this year. Dent Matejchuk, who was, uh, I believe, 12th overall this year. Um, and then that's not even getting into guys like uh, Kirill Marchenko, who was drafted, I believe, in 2018, played in the KHL. Uh, as a, an 18 year old has been there for the last four years and has made his trip, made his way over to North America. He's playing in this tournament. He's been sneaky good. Um, someone that is not getting as much time as I personally think he should uh, is a guy called Jordan Dumai, who was drafted in the third round, um, which shocked me because he led the entire QMJHL in scoring last season. You know, he broke record, but. And I think you can see where this is going. He's five foot eight. Right. So, and I just think a lot about, well, Johnny Gaudreau slipped all the way down to the fourth round because he's small, you know? And I watch Jordan Dubai play and he doesn't have the skating yet. I don't think he quite has the foot speed yet, but you, I watch him play and I'm like, that's, he could be a Johnny Gaudreau he could end up being one of the biggest steals for Columbus in this draft. And he went in the third round because he's five foot eight. So he's a guy that, uh, that I'm watching. And uh, one final guy, uh, because I have to, I have to talk about goalies. Uh, Jet Greaves has uh, been phenomenal for the baby blue jackets so far. Uh, I think, believe he made 32 of 33 saves in the opening game in Traverse city. Uh, I thought he was phenomenal. Um, Earned himself an NHL contract last season, was only supposed to be in the ECHL, got called up to the AHL, uh, ended up getting called up to the NHL, didn't play, but because all of the Columbus goalies were broken, he ended up sitting on the bench, uh, signed his entry-level contract, and uh, then was fantastic, I thought, in the AHL. So he's a guy that I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on this season for maybe even, you know, challenging Tarasov for that starter spot in the uh, in the Cleveland Monsters this season he's he's a guy that i think has kind of come out of nowhere and i'm super impressed with how he's played so far all right well jay why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media uh yeah so you can find locked on blue jackets wherever you get locked on nhl uh, we're on all podcast platforms we are over on youtube uh, we hit a milestone recently and we're looking for that next one so if you're not subscribed then uh, feel free to do that because i want to see if i can hit 250 by opening night and uh, you can find the podcast as well on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Jackets. Uh, we're going to be talking all things prospects on there. And uh, of course, as the season wraps up, we're going to be talking about line combinations uh, and of course, goalies, because I'm incapable of not talking about goalies. <laughs> and uh, you can also find me if you want my unbiased or extremely biased hockey opinions, I should say, uh, over at underscore Jacob Foster. Uh, that is J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. All right. Jay, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's early season games. 
Bet Online is also your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. And of course, NHL preseason is just about a week away. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts.